I think do what you're good at. And this is what I know. And I'm for some reason, just really able to tap in to the craziness inside of me. And so that is like kind of where this all comes from. Man, this movie was fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you. I'm such a fan of Screen Rant. So this is so cool. We love to hear that. So that's great. <laughs> um, you starred in and co-wrote this movie. So what inspired the story for you? I would say the story was inspired by me <laughs> and um, my delusions of grandeur. <laughs> And my commitment to stalking my high school ex and not being over him despite him dumping me years and years prior. And also um, inspired by, I think, just sort of me envisioning a different version of my life where I had not moved to L.A. And, you know, I think I would have probably just lived at my parents' house and just seen how far I could get in life with doing that and also doing basically nothing else. This is the road not traveled for you. Yes. This is the road that I often wish that I had traveled. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Cause I was very curious about your approach to creating June, like on the page, but as a performer as well. So obviously you tapped into elements of yourself that you, that like you have already, but also things that are kind of, could have like would have could have type situation. So what was that like, both as a writer and a performer? I will be honest. I like to always say that I am not that creative. My skill is digging in deep down and asking myself, how do I really feel? What would I really say? What do I really think here? And that's what comes out and gets onto the page and that's what drives my performance. You know, I'm not, at least up until this point, the kind of writer performer that's going out there doing like research and figuring out, like, I think do what you're good at. And this is what I know. And I'm for some reason, just really able to tap in to the craziness inside of me. And so that is like, kind of, where this all comes from. I'm going to argue what you started with, where you said you're not creative. I would argue that is an extremely creative approach because it's hard to like show yourself to the audience in that way. Oh my God. Thank you. Okay. I'm taking that. I'm keeping that compliment. Thank you. That's really kind. I think one of the things that I also found very interesting is that June's not necessarily a very likable character because there's a lot of elements that come through that remind me of people. Where you're just like, Oh, brother. All right. All right. So what was it like to create the character that was an unlikable female lead and how that enhanced the comedy? I feel like about 10 years ago, there was this like big conversation in TV and film writing where some executive at some point, you know, some things were going around where they were like, the female characters have to be likable. And then sort of as a culture, we like created a backlash to that. So I don't want to act like I'm the only one who's like on this unlikable female journey, but I definitely am on it and love it. And, you know, ever since my show Alone Together that we did two seasons of that are all up, up on Hulu, I was like, this is, again, it goes back to like what I am, what I know. I can't put together the puzzle pieces of what makes a woman likable. Like that seems first of all, so boring to me and uninteresting. And like, what is probably the reason why a lot of mainstream projects, like none of us care about, because we're just like, this is fake. Um, so for me, like the unlikable thing is just, it's just a big part of like my creative voice, I think, and just not feeling shame or embarrassment about your bad qualities, you know? And like June is selfish and June is absolutely delusionally stalking her ex-boyfriend despite him moving on. June steals, you know, like she steals. <laughs> <laughs> and so to me, those were just, that. that's kind of to me also where humor comes from and you just kind of don't you like to see a person just kind of do shitty things also 
maybe this is delusion of my own, but like I have like science says if you have like a round face, you're just naturally a likable person. And I found that people when they meet me, they just are like, oh, my God, you're so like they make all these assumptions about me because I'm from the Midwest and like have a round face and I'm friendly and they I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of leeway to do bad things because of that. My favorite scenes in this movie were the police interrogation scenes, just because of how frustrated June made the detectives by purely being herself, like not actively trying. Can you talk to me about writing and performing those scenes? Yeah, those were so fun. I'm so glad that those were your favorites, because when I watched the movie back, those are kind of my favorites, too. Um, I, I just love getting the opportunity to be a brat in a situation where you really should not be a brat because like you could get arrested just because you pissed off a cop and they're in a bad mood. So that was really fun for me. And um, specifically, I love to be disrespectful of men who are in positions of authority. And so that was really fun for me. And um, I think it just comes from like growing up with a bunch of uncles who like just viewed me as like a little kid and as an annoying little kid. And I would just so be like, what's your problem? Like, I don't know. I just have always been combative with older men. And our director, Nick Goosen, who's a friend of mine, has always picked up on that from like seeing me on comedy podcasts over the years. And so he really wanted to highlight that personality trait of mine. And I think we got it really well in that scene. And I know there's Jackie there too, but, you know, just being kind of a brat to Al Madrigal and not caring was fun. I loved your show Dollface. I was so bummed. Oh, thank you. I I'm curious, what do you envision Izzy's life as like after the season two finale? And are there storylines that you and the cast wanted to continue with season three? I, that's so interesting. Like, because things kind of worked out for Izzy at the end of season two in a way that like shouldn't happen for someone so kooky as, as her. So I think it would be really fun for season three to see her be secure in a relationship and also be her weird self. And gosh, it would be, I don't know, that makes me so like happy and sad to think of what her and the girls would be up to because I miss them so much. Like they're my favorite people I've ever worked with. So you've worked with Miranda Cosgrove before on iCarly. Is that what inspired her to be brought into this movie? We met in COVID and we just like hit it off right away. And we immediately found that we had like the same sensibility, very self-aware, self-deprecating, just kind of like don't, we both don't have high opinions of ourselves <laughs> and we related on that. And so then I, I worked on her show as a consulting producer for a couple of seasons. And then when we finally got this movie greenlit, I was like, Miranda, you have to be in everything I do. Like we have to work together forever. Will you play this part? And she was like, of course. And then she was amazing. So that's kind of how that happened. And can you talk to me about working with Bobby Lee and Bill Burr? I have been intimidated by Bill Burr for 15 years. I still like am nervous around him and can't believe he's in this movie. But our scene together, he was so funny. And it was so fascinating because he's a true stand-up comedian. But his improv, his improv, like his acting and his improv were so good it was it was probably one of the most fun scenes to shoot because he just kept hitting me with funny lines that I was not expecting um so it was really fun to work with him and then Bobby I'm much closer with and so that was just also really fun you know on the days where Bobby was on set I felt like oh my god let's just sit and hang and and it, I just felt really happy and comfortable. And I think like, as everyone on planet Earth knows, like when you're with your friends, everything is more fun. And that was like a big theme for this, this movie. I love that you have people that made you comfortable and people that challenged you. I think that's the perfect combination. Yeah, that's a good, that, that's, I love that. You're right. That's how I, I feel like when I was a ballet like when I was dancing in high school the way that I felt like I could get better is if I took 
if every week I took a class that was too easy for me and a class that was too hard for me. So I could like show off in the easy class and then struggle in the hard class. And that was like how I feel like I got better. I could talk to you all day, but that is my time. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Caitlin. I really appreciate the great questions. Thank you. 